Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today I thought we'd see if we could fit this into that there. Uh, basically what I've got here this is the 44 pin version of that um, sorry this is the 40 pin version of the 44 pin um, disc on module that I fitted to that Amiga 600 and I've got this because Basically, I want to see um, if this is going to be a good replacement for um, the hard drive in my 486 here. Um, I actually use this computer quite a bit. This is the reason why I'm considering putting this in there. I do actually use this computer quite a bit. It Basically, it has two main functions. Um, the primary function is to control that. That's my um, ICE Speedmaster, um, EEPROM programmer and um, IC analyzer. Um, basically program um, EEPROMs on here, GALS, PALS, things like that. Um, also you can test various RAM chips on it, you can um, test uh, 74 series logic, stuff like that. It's a very very useful piece of kit. It is quite old, it's from the 90s this, and um, all the software for it uh, runs on MS-DOS. So you basically need an MS-DOS computer to work, um, operate it. Anything will do, um, an XT would do. Uh, the software is not um, fancy or anything, it would run on an XT. Um, it just has to run on MS-DOS. And I just like this um, particular really nice small form factor computer, so I decided I'd use this as the main computer for the um, Speedmaster. Um, the other main purpose of that computer is to play Doom on. Um, it's a 486 SX33 with um, 8 megabytes of RAM. It's got um, an ad -lib, not an ad lib, it's got um, a Sound Blaster clone sound card in it. And it's the closest thing to the original computer I had in the 90s when I was like 13 or 14. I had a 486 SX25. Um, Slightly less RAM, I only had 4 megabytes of RAM when I bought it, but I did upgrade that. Uh, but this is my homage to that kind of thing. It's like it's um, an early 486, um, quite basic, but it does, it, it's a nice computer to use basically. Um, the hard drive in it, it's got a 420 megabyte quantum um, ID hard drive in it, in it at the moment. Now, that's been in there for quite a long time. I don't think it's the original hard drive that was in it. I don't I even think it had a hard drive in it when I got that computer. I'm going back a very long time. I've owned this since the 90s. Late 90s I think I picked this up. Um, and it's spent at least 15 years sat in my cellar, um, not being used. And when I put it away the hard drive actually worked fine in it. Um, when I dug it back out, in fact there's a video on this channel of me uh, resurrecting this computer. It's, it's a few years ago now, I think, if you check back in all my videos. Um, there, like I said, there is a resurrection video on this computer. Um, the Dallas real-time battery was flat in it, and the hard drive um, didn't work. And I can't remember if I filmed for, sorting the hard drive out or not. Um, but basically, there were some bad capacitors um, on the hard drive. I replaced them and got the hard drive working in it again. And it has worked fine ever since. Like I said, the computer gets a reasonable amount of use. Um, but it is, this is only a tiny little office I'm filming in here now, it has my editing computer and um, when I've got other stuff on the main work, on my main workbench I do do bits and bats in here as well. Um, obviously I do my um, EEPROM programming and testing ICs in here. And it's quite noisy. And I, that hard drive's not going to last forever. Like I say, it, it is an old quantum hard drive. Quantum hard drives do tend to have a bit of a failure uh, reputation. Um, it is of the age that it's going to have that rubber inside it. Um, basically, it has some little rubber bumpers um, that the head, the when the head moved across like that, um, it had some little rubber bumpers, so it won't, it wasn't hitting metal on metal. And over the years, that rubber basically turns to a goo and it kills a lot of quantum hard drives of, of the era of this hard drive unfortunately. It hasn't failed yet but it's it's a matter of time before it fails. I mean you can pull them apart and sort it but uh, and if it was one of my other computers that's just you know a computer that I have fun with um, fair enough but because I do use this for a purpose I'm just thinking that the 
basically the fact it's going to be quieter and more reliable is what's opting me towards uh, putting this um, disc on module in there. Anyway, I've rambled enough for now. What I'll do is I'll reset the camera up. I'll get you over here. We'll get the um, we'll get the 486 cracked open here. I'll quick look inside it, and we'll have a look at um, installing this in there. So uh, back in a sec. Okay, here we go. Um, as you can see, it is a little bit on the dirty side. This case could really do with a good scrub up, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Um, let's crack in it. I haven't got any screws in the case, so we can just. Thing. There we go. There we are. So this is a, a DCPC LV five plus um, four three three four thirty three SX. Um, it's branded a digital, but I don't actually think digital um, made these. I think they were made by another firm and uh, just branded up as digital. I know that. Um, one of their earlier um, computers, one of their earlier PCs, um, which was a 286 in a very similar style case, um, shares the motherboard with one of the Oaveti, in fact the same Oaveti um, 286 that I tried to get working which had a completely destroyed motherboard in it. Um, there is a digital uh, that basically shares the same um, 286 motherboard. But anyway, so this is um, we're inside. It's, it's it's really really basic and simple. This computer, uh, three and a half inch floppy drive, five and a quarter inch floppy drive, four twenty uh, megabyte hard drive. There, uh, we've got a Aztec sound card there. It did have a SCSI card in here, but at the moment I've actually pinched that for playing with the Apricot. So it's the one that I'm using to boot the Apricot off at the moment, and that will probably end up going into the Apricot that sound card actually may end up going into the apricot as well if we can um, get it working just so I've got a game port on it um, I do have another sound card um, which I'd like to put in this one um, slightly better um, sound card than that one and so I may do a bit of sound, cards, sound card swapping around as well there's also a um, standard 3com network card in here underneath underneath there for now I do want to connect this up to the network which to be honest isn't very often. Um, right, so that is basically the computer. Like I said, there's 8 megabytes of RAM in it. Um, no cache memory installed. It doesn't have to be fast, this computer, for what it does. I do have much faster, you know, vintage computers if I need them. Um, right, so what we want to do, let us um, disconnect the old spinning hard drive. Now the only thing with this computer, because it is quite an early 486, it only has the one IDE channel on it, which is going to pour, I, cause a tiny little bit of a problem. Um, we'll, we'll get into that um, later. All right, we've disconnected the standard IDE um, hard drive. We'll take the disk on module, and this will just connect straight to the. Um, the pin header on the main board. Just got to make sure we've got it in the right way around. I think is that way there. Right, I think we're right with that. Unfortunately, you've just got pins basically sticking. You've just got pins sticking off the um, card down there, so you, you don't have a. Um, a pin or anything to guide you in, you have to just make sure you've got the um, module plugged or the cable or anything plugged right down on there. Obviously, you can you could get it offset slightly, so you have to be super careful. You actually get it lined up and down onto the pins properly, so that's okay. And um, we need to give it some power, so we'll connect it up to that spare Molex connector there. Make sure the power is connected into the top of the module, that's okay. Right, I'll get you up on the screen and let's see whether this is actually going to work. Right, hopefully you can see that. Unfortunately you're going to be a bit of an angle, but there we go. Switch on. Right, I think I've actually plugged that in the wrong way around, being that it's not 
coming on. Just uh, bear with me a sec. Okay, let's try that again. I'd actually got um, two of the pins slightly offset, so it wasn't on the full 40 pin connector, so I really, really hope I've not damaged it. Uh, let's switch on. The computer's come up this time, so that's a good sign. Spacebar to terminate the memory test. F1 turn to setup. Um, and then let's go down here. Yes. There we go. Total size 499 megabytes. So that, well, let's see. Um, at least it's recognized it. Um, let's get out of here. Um, escape. F4 to save setup. Now there won't be any operating system or anything on this um, drive, or at least I don't think there should be. Let's um, let's see. There we go. Error loading OS. So I have got a um, MS DOS boot disk here. I'll stick that in the computer and press. Escape is it? I'll have to reset it. Hopefully the flicker of that screen is not going to be too annoying for you. In fact, let me switch that light off, that might make life a bit. Right, there we go, we're starting MS DOS. This is the full DOS um, setup, but we're not going to actually do that. Let's just um, escape out of this. Um, F3 to exit. F3. Right, now what we want to do is type F disk. Let's see if we can have a look at. Oh. F disk. And let's have a look at um, display partition information. So that's number four. Right. So we've got a non-DOS partition, 497 megabytes, and total space is 499 megabytes. Let's, let's escape that. Let's create a primary DOS partition. And we'll have it the full size of the drive. Right. And then we should be able to farm out that. boot into DOS now. Here we go. Uh, we'll get out of that again. So F3, F3. Then we can type format C, C colon forward slash s okay yes enter now that's farming quite quick right what I'll do is um, I don't want to have to wait you format this whole hard drive so I'll pause the video and um, I'll get back as soon as it's finished formatting. Okay that's finished and I've got you down on the actual screen so you can actually see what's um, see what's going on. I'm sorry about the flicker I was hoping it'd actually um, I must be uh, recording at um, 60 frames a second I didn't think I was uh, I thought because basically um, we're in the UK and um, the screen will be refreshing at 50 Hertz um, and we've got quite a nasty flicker so I'm presuming I'm um, recording at um, 60 frames a second anyway uh, sorry about that as you can see it formatted fine it's transferred the system over so now um, we'll take the disk out of the drive and we do a control alt delete this computer should hopefully now boot from that um, solid state hard drive
There we go, starting MS-DOS. Brilliant. So that is actually, um, that's transferred. So that computer is now booting off that um, SSD. Now the problem I've got is um, I need to transfer the data off my old quantum hard drive onto that SSD. And like I said, this is a very early 486. It actually only has one IDE channel on it. Now, the easiest thing to do would be to use um, an adapter so I can connect that disk on module to the second IDE um, to, as basically the slave drive. Um, the, the standard hard drive is already set as the master. Um, use a cable with two headers on it, like I said, and an adapter to plug it into that. The problem I've got is I only have, I can't believe this because I used to have boxes of them. I only have IDE cables with um, two connectors on them. Uh, I don't know what's happened to the boxes and boxes of the ones I had with three connectors on them. I haven't got any I can find anywhere. I don't really want to have to go hunting around rummaging in the attic for hours. So what I've thought is that we can do this a different way. Um, we're going to use the SCSI card, the SCSI hard drive and my bridge PC to transfer everything I want onto this um, computer now. So um, first thing we're going to have to do is pull the hard drive out of this and um, set it up with the bridge PC. So I'll get set up doing that and we'll come back as soon as I'm um, set up. Okay, so I've got the bridge PC opened up and I've extracted the hard drive from the um, 486. So we can basically connect this up and try and put it. Am I going to have enough? Enough. Um, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to um, disconnect the power from the um, floppy drive to give us enough power connectors to do this. Yeah. And push them down there like that. So we're going to need two for this. We're going to need one for this IDE hard drive which we can put up there like that. Let's get that plugged in. Like that. We've got another power connector there. And we need... Yeah, that'll do. And where is it? There we go. We've got uh, that SCSI hard drive. So this is the one I've been using with the um, apricot, and this will probably end up being the apricot's main um, main hard drive if we can actually sort the issues out with that computer. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit it like right, which one's pin one? That's pin one, so that has to go. Mm, this is going to be tricky. Alright, let's see if we can get because what we don't want to happen is for it all to fall over and those damage um, damage the hard drive or anything. Right, let's have a look at this now. There we go, that's connected to there. And all we need to do is give it some power. I'll need to make up some Molex extension leads, I think, for doing stuff like this. Right, that's not the most ideal, but it's going to have to. Um, it's going to have to kind of do. So we've got the SCSI hard drive there. We've got the IDE hard drive up there. So that's not ideal being at an angle like that, but it's what we're going to have to. Um, do so we'll I'll get you up on the screen we'll switch on both hard drives have at least fired up good switch the screen on and let's go into setup there we go standard configuration it's already found it there we go Secondary master quantum. Tra oh, it's a quantum trail trailblazer, I believe. 
wasn't sure which uh, model uh, which model it was. Uh, saving a good setup, yes. Right, we'll let it do all its tests, but yeah, it's definitely coming up. And the secondary master there. Floppy drive failed because we've had to nick its power to uh, run that, that's no problem. You can press F1 and we'll let XP boot up. That's the boot's fairly fastest computer. Computer. We should be able to see the drives. There we go. So we've got local disk C, which is the main hard drive, and we've got MS DOS D, and we've got MS DOS E. So that's the two. There's the 400 megabyte hard drive, and Oh, it's two gigabyte, I think. Yeah, the two gigabyte hard drive. I thought it was one gigabyte, but never mind. Two gigabytes, fine. So what we can do, if we'll make, oh, in fact, we'll make a um, directory on here, new folder, and we'll call it 486 PC. And then we'll go MS-DOS here, we'll select everything there, we'll copy, we'll go over to this one, is there not a, I thought I'd, I'd name that, and we'll, anyway, we will, I thought I'd read, I'd name that. Any name. 486 PC. There we go. Open that. Then we can paste. And we're basically copying everything off um, that hard drive there onto the SCSI hard drive. This is like super, super fast. If you think, if you consider back in the day how long it would take you to transfer um, that amount of data, about two or three hundred megabytes of data on that hard drive. Twenty odd seconds left to go. There we go. So basically, we've got everything off the old. Um, we've got everything off the old uh, 420 megabyte um, quantum drive. It's now sat on that SCSI drive there. So next, basically, what we've got to do is go back to the 486, connect that SCSI drive up to the 486, and transfer everything we want back um, back over to the um, 486. So we'll get back set up doing that and um, I'll be back in a sec. Okay we're back over to the DEC486 and first thing we'll do we're going to just stick the hard drive basically back in and um, not connect at all. 
but then I don't lose it anywhere, it's not going to get damaged. It's not causing any more any issues in there, it can just sit there. And if for any reason I want to revert back to a um, spinning hard drive, it's just a case of pulling the disk on module out, um, reconnecting the um, IDE cable. In fact, where's that? I'll find that small IDE cable that was um, that was actually connected up before, and I'll just leave it connected up to the. I think I've left it on this table over here. Have I? I can put that back in when I um, when I actually finish this thing off. So yeah, we basically we've got it back to how it was. So what we're going to do now, I have the SCSI card here, uh, which I've been using in the apricot. As I said. This card actually originally was fitted to this computer just to give it an external um, SCSI connector, nothing else really. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick it back in here, and we know that, that SCSI hard drive has got MS DOS um, 6.2 on it, so it should be a bootable drive. I have got, I'm struggling a little bit for space here, let's see, get this card back in, there we go, so we've got the SCSI card back in the 486, see it's not going to be living in here permanently, it will um, for the most likely be the one that's going in the, um, going in the apricot with this um, 2 gig SCSI drive. I thought it was only 1 gig this, but no it's not, it's a 2. Right, make sure that that's sat where it's not going to short out on anything. Um, in fact what I'll do is I'll just um, quickly pause and I'll reposition the cam camera so you can actually see what's happening on screen, so back in a sec. Okay, sorry folks. I uh, I um, started um, working and for forgot to stop record start recording. So let's just start that again. Switch the computer on. So basically, we've got the um, SCSI hard drive you've just seen all set up. And this is going to boot from the um, SSD. There we go. And what I've done, uh, this is what you've just missed me do, what I've done, I've basically copied X-copy. Um, essentially I've copied X-copy into the 486 PC um, file. So we go um, CD 486 PC. We've got xcopy.exe in there and that should allow us to copy everything out of this directory back onto the C drive so let's try this so we type xcopy star dot star forward slash s which means all subdirectories to C colon uh, yes this is because I just tried it before and then realized I had stop I had um, There we go. So this is basically now copying everything out of that directory that we created on the bridge PC, uh, the 486 PC directory, back onto the um, blank disk on the um, SSD, well on the uh, disk on module. Now this might take a little bit of time, actually it's doing it pretty damn fast. Uh, what I will do is I will um, pause the video and we'll get back as soon as this is finished copying. So, back in a sec. Okay, that's all the files transferred over from the SCSI hard drive onto the SSD. So we'll switch the computer off. I'll get you, um, if I can, I'll get you down onto the computer. There we go. Right, so all we've got to do now, basically, is disconnect the um, the SCSI hard drive. Let's get that off there. 
there we go I'll unplug that and put that somewhere safe because that's um, going to go back well hopefully that should be going in the um, going in the apricot I mean two gigabytes is um, overkill for the computer but that's the smallest SCSI hard drive I um, currently have well, apart, I've got some 40 megabyte ones for um, Apple Macs but I don't really want to use them for anything else uh, right so let's pull that SCSI card out of there because we don't need that in there anymore so the SCSI card can be taken out and again that's going back into the um, that probably will end up as the SCSI card in the Oavetti and I'll put a different SCSI card back in here to be honest for this computer it doesn't really need to have a um, SCSI card in it for what I use it for uh, that's not coming out now it's very difficult trying to do this with the camera where I've um, currently got it uh, I can't actually really reach reach the computer now that should be free why are you not coming out Right, just bear with me folks because um, I want to get out without damaging anything it's the SCSI card out of there now the only thing I need to do is I just need to reroute oh no I thought I got that um, cart around there we just need to push that down there where it's neat and that's it basically um, I'm going to leave that hard drive in there it's just not connected up at all there's no IDE cable to it and um, it's not got um, the MOLEX connector so there's no power up to it so it's not going to spin up so this computer should be nice and um, nice and quiet from now on All right, we'll put the we'll put the case back on it oops I just bashed you with the um, case then didn't I let's see if we've got enough room just to get this down and on yeah let's get that back as it should be we'll push that back home Yes, I know you can tell it's a grubby computer. I do need to give it a bit of a a bit of a spruce up, I suppose. But it's one of the few computers, vintage computers around here, like I said, that does actually serve a, um, a specific purpose. In fact, we can put the uh, we'll put the Speedmaster back on top as well. We'll switch on. Wow, listen to that. Isn't that a bit of a difference? I'm going to let it go through all its tests and hopefully the computer should um, boot up. Let's have a look. Starting MS DOS. Uh, we'll have to sort the auto exec out. Because of what we've um, we've done. Obviously, we've. Hang on, let me just sort my keyboard out so I can use it. There we go. Um, but let's do a DIR. That's all our. Um, there's all our stuff. In fact, let's go. CD games. And let's see if Doom will run. I haven't got my speakers connected up on my mouse, but. Um, There we go, lovely. As you can see, your know, Doom runs really nicely on this uh, computer. This is how I remember playing Doom when I was a kid. I started a 486 um, SX25. Um, I had a 286 before that but um, that got stolen and um, with the insurance money I bought a 486 um, SX25 that actually ended up as an SX33 because um, I overclocked it but yeah uh, I'm quite pleased with that now um, so those Discon modules, um, they are definitely worth considering if you want a um, a nice cheap solution for an older computer like this. Even the slightly you know, like the four gig, um, you know, sixteen gig ones, thirty two gig are not ri ridiculously priced. They are reasonable. 
the, the small ones like this for like older computers are really really cheap so you know they're worth they are definitely worth considering put it that way so I'm going to leave it there for now anyway I'm um, pretty pleased with it so all I've got to do now is just sort the auto exec dot bat out so I don't think I copied it over originally when I was um, when I was doing this that's why we haven't got it let's see if we can finish the level there we go right like I said I'm going to leave it there for now I hope you enjoyed this little um, video home. So uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.